Think of the people you love most in your life. Now consider this. Did you include yourself on that list? I'm Kim Forrester, and today on the Eudaimonia podcast, it's time to discuss self-love. Welcome to Eudaimonia, the podcast that is all about flourishing. Plug in, relax, and get ready for the goodness as we explore the traits and practices that can help you thrive in life. With your host, Kim Forrester. Paul Fishman is a self-love coach, outrageously sassy blogger, and host of the Road to Self-Love podcast. Through his work, Paul aims to empower others to love themselves, build self-confidence, ditch the people-pleasing, and live the life of their dreams. It's my absolute delight to be connecting with Paul today to discuss the importance of self-love and to learn why loving ourselves fully is key if we truly want to flourish. Paul Fishman, welcome to the Eudaimonia podcast. It's just such a delight to have you here with me today. Thank you so much for having me. I feel honored to be speaking to someone like on the other side of the world. Isn't technology amazing? Particularly at this moment in time, right, where there are other things that are a little more uncertain. It's just delightful Mm -hmm. to be able to connect. Let's get right into it. You are the self-love man, right? Mm -hmm. I am. I think that there's a concern out there that people who love themselves would be considered to be sort of, you know, self-centered or narcissistic. Do you think that this is true? Is that how you would define self-love? Well, Kim, I mean, I think we have to start there. We have to start with the definition of self-love. And if we look at the two words that make up this beautiful term, the first word is self and the second word is love. Now, what does self mean? It means the individual. And what Mm. does love mean? It means devotion. So to love yourself means that you are devoted to your individuality. And for anyone to say that that is selfish, I have to disagree Because Mm. the more selfish thing is keeping your truth and keeping who you are as the only individual that is you actually inside, right? So if we are living our lives for others and we are scared of what people are going to think of us, that is the complete opposite of self-love. And that to me is way more selfish than expressing your truth and loving yourself unconditionally. That's such a powerful definition because we are pressured in so many ways. And, you know, we have these unconscious desires to conform and to be normal. What you're saying there is that self-love is about sort of allowing those differences to shine as well and allowing us to adore and embrace those parts of ourselves that are different, that are unique, that are quirky. Is that right? That, that You nailed that one straight on the head, Kim. There are millions of people around the world trying to improve themselves, Paul. And, you know, looking at your website, some might say that you are sort of into self-improvement. But does self-improvement actually connect to self-love or are they actually at odds with one another? So this is a really great question, Kim, because once again, whenever we attach this word self to the front of anything, it's all about the individual right? Who am I to say that one thing, self-discovery and self-development and personal growth, like those are all completely individualized things. So for me to draw this blanket thing that says self-love is not connected to self-improvement would kind of be just against everything that I teach, which is just, if you want to love yourself through improving yourself, then I mean, please do that. If you feel like self-improvement isn't an act of self-love and for you, you just want to be comfortable with with where you are right here and now and that's your self-love, then so be it. That is the beauty. It is the devotion to your individuality, the devotion to what you need to powerfully show up as you are right here and now. So once again, it's about absolutely being unique and being authentic. But Mm -hmm. that leads me to a question then. Self-improvement, in my mind, is about changing the things that we don't particularly like about ourselves, right? If we're thinking we have to improve something, it's because we don't accept it as being at the standard that we want for ourselves. Does loving ourselves mean that we always like ourselves, Paul? Or can we sort of dislike some characteristics and behaviors and choices? Listen, I don't think that there is a single human out there 
who wakes up every single day just like fully obsessed with themselves. Like I think that that in itself is more of an issue than waking up every once in a while feeling like, you know what, I'm really struggling today. If we weren't on this specific journey to improve ourselves, if we weren't on a a journey of life, which is learning and growing and have communication and having relationships with other people, right? That's why during this uncertain time in the world, so many people are struggling because a lot of these relationships are either ripped away from us physically or we're having like this difficult concept of what our relationships even mean to ourselves. So for us to say that like every single day you have to love yourself and you have to do this and you have to skip out of bed and be excited for your life, like that would just be really boring. Your answer there is really fascinating because you're talking about this journey of life that we're on. And it takes me back to my previous question about self-improvement. Because I guess if we drill down to it, life itself is about us learning and growing and improving ourselves in some ways. If not improving ourselves, at least becoming a greater version of ourselves. Right. Right. And you're saying there that part of that journey, if we're doing it authentically and if we're doing it right, means that there are going to be days where we're not feeling so crash hot about who we are or the choices that we're making. Does that make sense? Yes. And that, I mean, that is so spot on in the sense that like every single day that we are on this journey to whatever our goals are as individuals is a day to be proud of. And There's something that I share with all of my clients. It's this beautiful mantra that really empowers and inspires presence, like the day-to-day presence, because it can be really, really easy to get caught up in what we're not doing. It's really important to do your best to stay present and focus on what you are doing, Mm -hmm. right? So, and this mantra is really powerful, and I would highly recommend if it resonates with you to say these words while looking at yourself in the mirror. So I'm going to share these words now, Kim. So this, this is how this mantra goes. I give myself permission to be okay with where I am. I honor the journey and know that I am doing my best. I love and accept you. I love and accept you. I love and accept you. That is beautiful. It actually brought tears to my eyes. Mm. The simplicity and the beauty of those simple words. Thank you, Paul. Is that something that you engage in every day? Oh, yes. And I actually created this beautiful printout, PDF printout of that mantra, because what I think is really important is like print it out and put it on your mirror in your bathroom so you see it. And even if you don't have the courage or the wherewithal to actually say the words out loud, at least you're seeing it every single day. That's actually something that if you go to my website, and sign up for my email newsletter, I will send you that mantra on a printout so you can print it out and put it on your mirror in your bathroom or wherever you want. Now, you haven't always been as aware or as engaged in self-love as you are now. And I want to just touch on your personal story because I share this particular journey with you because Mm -hmm. you openly share um, your experience in the past as a people pleaser, right? I know this well. I love how you explained that in your mid-20s, you got to the point where you literally didn't know the answer to the question, who am I? And I think I was in a similar age too when I realized that I actually had no idea who I was or what my beliefs were or what my opinions were. And for all the people pleasers who are listening out there, I'm sure that you'd resonate with this concept of being so attached to being whatever other people need or want you to be Mm -hmm. that you lose complete sight of yourself. Was that your experience? Yes. So what is a people pleaser? A people pleaser is someone who sacrifices themselves for other people's happiness. I Mm. believed that if I can make other people happy, that somehow that happiness would then translate to mine. And for far too long, I tried, I went down that road, and I never got to that destination of happiness. This idea that by giving other people gifts or saying yes to going out to dinner when all I wanted to do was stay inside and Netflix and chill, that whole concept was 
what I tried for so long and it didn't work out for me. It didn't make me feel good. It didn't make me feel honored. And my subconscious was just like screaming for this awareness that like the things that I was doing, I didn't want to do. I was living wholeheartedly for the expectations that I thought my parents, friends, and family had for me. Mm. Now, this can get really difficult to understand because this idea of expectations that we subconsciously place on ourselves and blame others for placing on us is like a massive like societal construct that I'm trying my best to dismantle. Yeah. And it's really but it's really, really challenging because it's hard to take ownership for all the decisions we've made because it's easier to blame our parents for saying, if you don't go to college to be a doctor, then we're not going to pay for your education. And that wasn't necessarily my full story. But like, if you can relate to that story being like, you have to do this, or we're not going to take care of you. And feeling so like, okay, I guess I have to do what they say. Like, Mm. this is a constant thing that we run into, whether it's from a boss, or it's from friends, family, significant others, children, right? We have all of these people telling us, you have to do this for me or else. And even like on a a media standpoint, you have to do this or Mm -hmm. else. You have to look a certain way or else. And it just conditions us to constantly look for external validation. And that's where I was. I was looking in the mirror and being like, you've been searching for external validation your entire life and it hasn't made you happy. All it has made you is even more miserable and even more upset with yourself. So there's, there's a missing piece here. Something, something isn't working out. Yeah. See, I frame it as self erasure. I know I absolutely erased self. We simply do not exist in that realm when we're in that frame of mind. Paul, are there ways that you feel that my listeners can just check in now and see if they are erasing parts of themselves and see if they are living simply to fulfill the conditions and the expectations of others. How is that going to be manifesting itself in people's psyche? Yeah, well, I mean, of course, like if if you're listening to this and it's like, you're kind of like, oh, I don't want to listen to this anymore. Maybe you're a little triggered. Maybe you're feeling like, uh, oh, this is uncomfortable or you can really relate. Like those are some signs that like people pleasing has like weaseled its way into your core because the things that make us uncomfortable are normally things that we don't really enjoy about ourselves and trigger mm-hmm. us and bring up wounding and traumas and whatnot. So I have this four-part strategy that's really, really quick and easy to remember. It's an acronym, and the acronym is PAUL. The P stands for presence, okay? So you have to get present with yourself. Give yourself permission to focus on the right here and now. How are you feeling right now? Take a deep belly breath and experience what's going on in your body, right? If you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I don't want to think about the fact that I've been people-pleasing my entire life. Notice that, right? And then the Mm -hmm. A is accountable. Hold yourself Mm -hmm. accountable, accountable for those feelings, accountable for the actions that have gotten you to where you are right here and now. And then move into you, unconditional acceptance. You're meant to learn something from this experience. You're meant to learn how to be a better version of yourself, a more empowered version of yourself, someone who people can look up to and that you can actually even look up to. And then finally step into L, which is love. Just throw some love at the whole experience. Like we are humans, as Kim and I discussed earlier during this interview, Self-love isn't finite. It's not something that we're going to wake up one day and just experience. Self-love is you as the individual, right? So you have to give yourself permission right here and now to know that, A, you no longer want to live this way, and B, you are the only person who can actually change anything about your life. It's you and you alone. Was there a point, Paul, that triggered you, that compelled you to start this journey towards self-love? What was it that changed the course of your direction in life? Yeah, so there was like a catalyst of really three, maybe even four things that were stacking on top of my shoulders that just I couldn't handle anymore. I was in an emotionally abusive relationship that I thought was what everyone wanted me to be in. I was working a job that did not truly value me and was continuing to trigger my wounding of not feeling valued. This is my deep core wounding that I struggle with. And then a 
on top of that, I was in financial crisis and I had like this breakdown where I literally got up, I looked in the mirror and I said, Paul, who are you? You are clearly living your life for everyone else is not working out for you. It's not working out for you. So what can you do differently right here now? Mm. I left the relationship. I communicated with a recruiter that it was time to move on and I made financial decisions. And because of that, I was also carrying around 75 pounds of excess body weight. Within two weeks of making those decisions to leave the relationship, to put myself out there career-wise, to make a, a more financial abundant plan, 20 pounds of emotional weight fell off of me in two weeks. People pleasing Paul is only one way I feel that a sort of lack of self-love can manifest itself. In your experience, what are some of the other unhealthy behaviors we adopt when we don't love ourselves fully? Right. So big ones are self-sabotage. So basically like not allowing ourselves to do the things that we truly, truly want, not having boundaries, very unclear if any boundaries with close friends, family, communities, even on social media, not having boundaries. Mm -hmm. Those are the first two that like really populate a lot inside of my clients. Another one is like the inability to express yourself, zero self-confidence, just not feeling worthy, a lack of worth, like Mm -hmm. taking any job because it pays, not looking for the job that you know you are worthy of and that you truly, truly want. Like these are things that if you don't love yourself, if you don't say, I am worth living a life of my dreams, I am worth stepping into my truth and embodying myself as the human that I was put on this planet to be. Mm. If you're not doing that, then there's a lack of self-love there that is truly triggering all of these other negative beliefs and thought processes and blocks that you're putting in your own way. All of those mental habits, all of those behaviors you just listed there, they can become so automatic, so ingrained, so unconscious that I feel obviously the first step is to sort of become more self-aware, right? Yes, yes. Use the Paul strategy, get present. Yeah. The work that you do and the message that you share is full of fun and laughter and dance parties. I love it so much. (laughs) How important do you feel play and laughter are in learning to love ourselves? Oh, I mean, it's, it's second to none. It's, it's, the most important thing because the reality is is that self-sabotage, self-hate, self-loathing all come from taking ourselves way too seriously, right? And not giving ourselves permission to play or laugh or experience the joy all around us, right? There's always two ways that we can view a, a situation as something horrible that's happening to us or something magical that's happening for us. And I feel like that's mm-hmm. the the initial definition of play, right? Like this is happening for me. Yes, I might be stuck inside until uh, here in the States, we've been told that we need to shelter in place until at least the end of April, right? But this is a beautiful opportunity for me right here now to move more, to do the things that I've been putting off, to have fun, to laugh with my partner, to dance and sing and show all of the talents that haven't been given the light of day the opportunity Mm. to shine and and if you're not willing to have fun and laugh and know that like life is just like a playful game then self-love gets to become your focus starting right here and now that's cool as you've learned to love yourself more paul how has your relationship with others changed has it improved in some ways oh my goodness i mean 100% improved because with self-love comes self-acceptance, self-awareness. And within that, the understanding that everything that happens outside of me has nothing to do with me, right? Mm. I might trigger someone who then is triggered to communicate back to me something, but that's just a projection of their personal experience of my reality. Mm. And I, you know, Kim, I've received emails from people saying, Paul, a year ago, I found you on Instagram and you triggered me to the end. Like I couldn't handle you. So I had to unfollow (laughs) you. I just heard you on a podcast and I'm 
back to, and I needed to let you know that like, I just was not ready to receive the message that you were sharing. And ultimately this is what we get to learn day in and day out. Everything that you want, everyone else wants you to have that. Your parents don't want you to be unhappy. If your parents are unhappy with you, it's really just a reflection of how they see themselves in comparison to you, Mm. right? We're trying to put other people in boxes so we can define who we are as an individual because that's how we've been told. We've been turning into a compare-dashian left and right, comparing ourselves to others. That's just not a cute look. Many of us in this day and age, we avoid what we would consider to be confrontation right? Mm -hmm. We avoid situations. We text through the information rather than say it to someone's face because it gets awkward. Has having more self-love helped you in those cases? Do you step bravely into situations where you feel there might be confrontation or do you just simply not see it as confrontation at all? Mm. Listen, confrontation is really challenging for me. It's gotten a lot better. You know, the current I don't know what what even is happening right now in this world has brought up a lot of confrontation that I've had to step through with events that were planned and clients who are struggling to make their payments and things like this. And, And I found so powerfully that when I say, you know what, I'm worthy of having this conversation and this person is worthy of having the conversation as well. If I step in as a leader and say, let, let let's work this out right? Like, Mm. it's just like, it brings humanity back into it. It brings human connection. It brings the understanding that like, the beauty of all of this is that we're all realizing how collectively we all just want each other's happiness. And, and confrontation has a, a negative rap. I think that if we step into confrontation, understanding that like, I am willing to hear what you have to say right now. If someone confronts me in a text message, I will say, can we get on the phone and talk about this? Yeah. Are you willing to have a dialogue about this? Are you, I, I want to hear you. However, it's really, really easy if we're texting or using email to blow things out of proportion and also just to focus on what you want to say. What about the other person? What are they saying? And it's so important to acknowledge that, that there's confrontation, there's two sides to a confrontation, unless you're having like an internal dialogue confrontation, which is a whole nother thing. (laughs) For me, I'm just reflecting as you're answering there. And I can see that I probably avoid confrontation because of my people pleasing Mm -hmm. habits. And so I can see that I probably avoid confronting people because I am afraid that I will try to please them rather than stand up for what I truly believe in. So that's just a really interesting sort of reflection there. Yeah, that's uh, that's basically what we're struggling with. It's the fear of other people's opinions. It's faux po, yeah. fear of other people's opinions. Faux po, I love that. <laughs> Paul, how can we help create environments where others feel more able to love themselves? This is something that you do literally as a career for a living now. Are there things that we as individuals ought to do or not do to ensure that the people around us can become more self-loving? Right. So this is kind of like a trick question in the sense, or a trick answer. It's really committing more to your own individuality, your own dismissal of toxic silencing and erasure, as you said. Like Mm. the more that you align with your truth and speak your truth and your willingness to just show up powerfully for you. And once again, this isn't a selfish act when you are doing it because you know that it's the only true way that you will be happy. And the reality is just to divert a little bit, when people are calling self-love selfish, they're actually talking about self-care being selfish because at the end of the day, you don't see someone being, oh, you are being so selfish for being you fully. No, they're saying you're being so selfish because you're going out and you're you're ignoring me or you're being so selfish because you're taking a bath or you're not cleaning up or you're not doing this. Like that's when people say selfish and that's really because their core needs aren't being met. The difference between self-love and self-care, it's really important to point out because this gets confused a lot. Self-love is a, is a mental act. It's an act of 
gratitude, of love, of acceptance, of understanding for oneself, of devotion to your individuality. Self-care is a physical act. It's taking care of yourself. It's something you do for your body, your physical form. So that's like, you know, going to the spa or purchasing something or eating food, right? So these are all things that we're doing for our physical form. So where people get tripped up is when they are practicing self-care without any form of self-love baked into it. So for instance, going to the nail salon and getting your nails done and the entire time you are focusing on all of the things that you should be doing that you aren't or focusing on everything, every other thing that you could be spending that money on or just beating yourself up for getting a manicure instead of spending time with your friends and your family. Mm. These are all negative thoughts that are the antithesis of self-love and basically making that self-care self-destructive because all you're doing is you're, you're taking care of yourself, but with negativity in your heart and your soul. And it's going to continue to trigger the cycle of when we take care of ourselves, that it's not good for us. And that is something that I, like I've been really feeling empowered to reframe the conversation about what self-care is and how the real only way to make self-care the most impactful is when you are sitting in gratitude saying, I am worthy of this. I am worthy of this. I am grateful for this. And if you can't sit in that gratitude, then it's time to rethink the act that you're doing. It's time to rethink what you're doing because it's not self-care at all. Paul, I just love that. That's really, really powerful and insightful. My final question, you've already given us an amazing exercise that we can do each morning in the mirror, but every episode of the Eudaimonia podcast, I ask my guests for a morning reminder. Can you recommend a practice, a mantra, or an affirmation that my listeners can start using today to help them learn to love themselves more? Yes, yes. And some of your listeners are probably going to roll their eyes at this, but I'm going to challenge your listeners and anyone who's listening to this to start at least the first 15 minutes of your day without technology. Wow. And see what comes into that space, whether it's just sitting, whether it's meditation, if it's movement, if it's journaling, if it's saying the mantra that I shared earlier or doing the things that you've always wanted to do, just spending 15 minutes. The beauty of starting your day without technology is it starts your day in a non-reactive state. When we open up our phone, more often than not, there's emails, there's texts, there's notifications, there's things to watch on social media. That creates a reactionary response to our day. And we will go in without as much gratitude as when we start with the simplicity of a slow morning. So something that I love to do to fill this space is when I wake up, I go to the mirror, I brush my teeth, I have a glass of water, and I then just like sit in peace. I'm not the best meditator. It's something that I've struggled with my entire life. I was actually raised in a church where we meditated. So like that I've, I've known how to meditate since I was a very little boy and I really struggle with it. I'm working on it. Like this is definitely <laughs> the thing that I get to work on. However, just sitting in silence and focusing on my breath, even with my eyes open, has been really healing for me. And that's what I try and do every morning. And I did it this morning and it's been a while since I did it. And I, I just can't explain how empowered I felt to then when I opened up my phone and saw that there was an issue that I had to tackle, to tackle it with grace and come from a place of understanding and love than reaction. And it it just like, it shifts my entire day. And I really want to empower anyone who's listening to consider that. And if 15 minutes sounds like too much, spend the first five minutes, right? I have no expectation for you to do anything that feels uncomfortable, but I do want you to feel challenged to be the best version of yourself. And within those 15 minutes, you might find it. That is just amazing. Paul Fishman, if people want to learn more about you, and I really encourage them to come and find out more about you, where should they go? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at Paul Fishman. This is the best place to uh, get to know me. I have some highlights that introduce me, and and that is the, the best place to start. It's my first name, Paul 
my last name, fish like the things that swim in the sea, man like me. And um, if you want a little bit more, a little more guidance into a self-love journey, you can head to my website, paulfishman.love.love. And there's a banner at the top that links you to a five question quiz that's going to give you the best self-love routine to start your morning with. So this will give you the tools to start your day without your cell phone. And uh, you just have to answer the five questions and I will send you the assets to get you started on your self-love journey. That is just simply awesome. And of course, there's links to your podcast there as well, The Road to Self-Love. Oh, yeah. Paul Fishman. (laughs) (laughs) Don't forget about the podcast, Paul. (laughs) It has just been a pleasure and a delight to connect with you today. Thank you so much for your insights, your wisdom, and all the love that you exude, Paul. Mm, It's my pleasure. May I share one final thing? Sure. I want everyone who's listening to this to know that You are listening to this message for a reason. This podcast was put in your life for a reason. So give yourself permission to receive what you were meant to receive and take action on it today. Amazing final words. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. As the poet Abhijani encourages, dare to love yourself as if you were a rainbow with gold at both ends. You've been listening to the Eudaimonia podcast. If you'd like to learn more about how to live a truly flourishing life, please subscribe and check out eudaimoniapod.com for more inspiring episodes. I'm Kim Forrester. Until next time, be well, be kind to yourself and love yourself fully. (laughs) 